Hey everybody, we're back with another episode in the tutorial series. Um, this one's going to be kind of a follow-up to the previous episode when we did, uh, when we worked with power lines and uh, using uh, two scripts to get our power lines linked up uh, with the uh, power poles uh, using splines. Uh, and this time I'm going to demonstrate how incredibly useful that power pole script is, you know, setting, being able to set objects a certain distance from each other um, and, and especially objects that um, are aligned in a series, you know, like, like guardrails or, you know, you could even do roads, but we have street spline constructor. Um, anything, anything where you need to align something uh, in a row, uh, you know, you can do it. You know, you could even do this with uh, these wooden fences. Do I even have these over here? They're somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. These wooden fences here, you could uh, you could do you could use this same process really if you if you really wanted to you just had to measure the length out right so the most important one I think and the the, the one that probably um, is the biggest time saver is when you have a railroad running through your map okay so we got a railroad running through here in real life this is what it looks like okay and um, I need to be able to recreate that and I don't want to go through and set all of these uh, tracks down by hand, right? And then there are some curved pieces as well. So you'd have to like try to get the curve right, but like a lot the the modeled curves don't really go around this curve quite correctly. So, and this is a very long curve, right? <clears throat> That's incredibly painstaking work. So I was like, well, well, maybe we can spline it. Maybe we'll try the, uh, the power line trick and put it in here, over here in the scene graph, put it in tracks, spline placement objects to place and try it that way. Well, it works fine on the straightaway, but when you get to the curve, it just it, it looks all jagged because it's trying to every, you know, length of this track, it's trying to turn it. So it looks like that and then it looks like that and then it looks like that, you know, and so the tracks don't actually connect. Now, if we had um, if we had modeled this so that, um, you know, it was just the boards and then uh, and then we could like connect the uh the, the rail lines like like we could with the uh with the the power lines over here then we could definitely probably do something um with with that method um with these with these modeled railroads but why do that why do that when we can just create our own railroad okay so let's create uh, our own little model to get this to um you know follow this curve so if there's anything i learned from calculus um, in uh, in college, is that uh, you can you can create curves uh, from many 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 lines, okay, thousands of lines you get a nice smooth curve, right? All you know those are tangents for those of you who haven't taken calculus. I was horrible at math, but I do remember that, and I took all the way through up through calc two, and then I stopped after that, so it was a nightmare. Okay, so what I did was okay. Here's here's one of our quote unquote tangents along that curve. This is a template that I made. Remember templates we use for our power lines, our our uh, our, our fence script and everything. I created a template called new rail. Okay. Created this new rail group over here. All right. And uh, I just use these these objects that I found, but really you you would ideally I need to change these out and just uh, you would go to create primitives cube create a cube and then size it to and then then size everything including these boards that I like took off a fence you would size all of that to scale along with this this rail right you know you just uh you know just bring it over here you can bring the whole group over here if you really wanted to and kind of scale it from there right uh just to make it look like that you know somewhat uh similar this isn't at 90 degrees there we go. So yeah, um, you know, just creating just something very primitive with primitives um, to recreate that line. That way, the space between the rails here, I think this is a base game railway. Um, the space between the rails will fit the train that we're going to script along this track. And we can use the spline for that that train. And, uh, and we can create nice smooth curves, right? So uh, I did that. And then I went to the script, all right? And uh, the distance that I measured was about 1.07. So this transform group right here, it says 1.087, 1, but I uh, it ended up not being close enough. So I kind of adjusted it to 
to adjusted the numbers here and you know you could just keep doing that until it gets the, the, the objects connect properly right so 1.07 was the number I came out to for this particular object and then I ran I ran the script um, and it connected all these lines now I have not looked to see uh, if this has any performance issues I will make sure to uh, to note that uh, if there are any in-game performance issues uh, but really it should operate like you know, like a fence. Um, it's a pretty basic, uh, very, very low poly thing, but they're just like, you know, they're, they're, there's so many, there's thousands of these rails that, uh, that I put in here, you know, it just goes on and on and on. Um, but if there are no performance issues, this works absolutely perfectly. You know, you'd need, need to retexture this uh, primitive to look like an actual rail. It's kind of light right now. Um, and maybe scale it, but it, you know, it doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look, you know, like this, this is an actual rail tie, you know, like it, this, this is, this rail looks, you know, it, it's actually modeled and everything. We're just using a box basically, but you know what? It works. So <laughs> that's what matters until somebody can, uh, cause you know, if you scale this down, that's what's, it's going to look awful, right? That's what's going to look like if I were to scale it down like that. See, <laughs> so uh, so not gonna do that. Maybe I mean there's maybe there's something I could do about that, but um, but yeah. So I hopefully you uh, that that's how you do rails, you know, and you and make sure you're saving that spline. I I uh, I forgot to say that I did the same process with the power poles. I splined this railway. Okay, going through even the, going through the road over here. Although I need do need kind to kind of adjust that, and I'm gonna save this spline and see uh see if the train looks good uh running on it uh, but but the, the train that's later we'll get the train on here and everything um so yeah i hope you found this useful uh, i will see you in the next episode um before you even think about starting the uh, next episode you should start cleaning up the field edges so i uh cleaned up the sides of the map and in between the fields and some spots uh, where the fields were just a little too close to each other and start finalizing your fields Okay, and you may you can go back and adjust them later after we've done field dimensions and farmlands, but uh, start start doing that now because uh, that's going to be super helpful when we're when we're doing field dimensions because they do need to be separate, otherwise they're going to be counted as one field when we run that script. Okay, all right, I will see you in the next episode and happy uh, happy rail making uh, or something. I don't know how to close this video. Okay, bye.